What's up, everybody? You are now listening to From the East Side with Love. It's your boy, Kosher. And, man, we got some sports stuff to talk about today. Sports news and all that jazz. So let's get into it. Big trade that just went down with the Knicks and the Nets. Michael Bridges uh, to the Knicks. And uh, for Bohan. Bogdanovich and first uh, and five first round unprotected picks. I mean, that's more than the Lakers got. Uh, the the um, New Orleans got for AD, I believe. Like, you know, Mikel is good and all, but I don't think he's AD level. But yeah, so what do you guys think? I mean, does it fit with the Knicks? Interestingly enough, the Villanueva boys. A Villanova, excuse me, Villanova, Villanova boys, you know, Hart, Brunson, and Bridges now, those guys all played on the same college team. They're back together in the pros. That, that's a beautiful thing, so I'm sure they're pretty happy. Uh, they have chemistry. But um, what do you think What do you think that does for the Knicks? Disappointed loss against the Pacers in the semifinals, on the Eastern Conference semifinals, I feel like, I'm sure that they feel like they were close if they were healthy with Tom Thibodeau to to reach the Eastern Conference Finals, probably challenging the Celtics. So, yeah, do you feel like this guy, Bridges, hasn't missed a game since high school, I believe? Um, you know, Tom Thibodeau, they say has a reputation of being a a rough coach. Um, plays his players, you know, grinds them. So now he has a guy that's pretty much like an Iron Man. Plays all a lot, all the games. How will you fit in with that team? Do you think the Knicks have made the push to become? Have made it over the hump now. They also have OG Anobi, who the Knicks want him to stay. They're trying to keep, you know, trying hard to keep him, but. Will he stay? Um, I'm hearing the Sixers are in the cut. So what do you feel like the Knicks will do? And do you feel like they'll be able to to make it over to help? I'm interested. I know there's a couple of Knicks tape fans, Knicks fans uh, that listen to the podcast. So I'll be interested to hear their take. I'm sure they're excited about Bridges. He's a good player. But is he that? I think the Knicks need a superstar. That's and Jalen Brunson is not a superstar, he's a very good player, but they need a superstar. Um, but Bridges is a good team, they may have a good core. We'll see what happens. Uh, speaking on the Nets, seems like they're trying to do a fire sale. Anybody and everybody can go Simmons, Schroeder, Dorian Finney Smith, Cam Johnson. They're just trying to rebuild. Um, yeah, uh, crazy. Crazy, crazy. Just the Nets seem like they can't get it right. Um, news about KD. So, looks like KD may be on the move again. You know, um, on the from the Suns, there was, moves that, there was news that he was going to possibly go to Houston. But we've heard Stephen A. Smith dispel that and say, hey, the organization is not really feeling KD. Maybe Adoka, the um, coach, may be feeling KD. But the organization doesn't want him. But they're feeling like a younger player like Devin Booker. How do you feel about Devin Booker on, on Houston? That might be a good look. Younger, obviously. And they may be able to grow with him. But I don't see Booker leaving the Suns for Houston. Houston would have to throw everything. And I, I just don't see it. But do you see KD staying with the Suns? Do you think somebody could uh could switch that up and, and offer a trade for KD? Um, I would love KD on the Lakers, but I doubt that's gonna happen. I don't think people want to trade with the Lakers. Warriors are preparing to offer a max to Paul George. So, you know, Paul George. I heard the Sixers are interested in him. The Warriors are now interested in him. Should he stay with the Clippers? Should he go somewhere else? How do you feel about him? I think he has a couple of years left. Um, 
I think he doesn't need to be the focal point of your team. He needs to be like the second or third option. With the Clippers, it's kind of like a ro- rotating door because Kawhi be injured, you know, James Harden, Russell, what, like, like, so, um, I think when Kawhi is on the, on the court and those two go at it, as far as they play together, that's the team to beat. But when they're not playing together and he has to be the main focal point, eh, um, I don't know if we want that now, um. Not to say that he can't lead a team. I just, I don't think we're at that stage right now. I think, I think that that's kind of gone behind him. Um, so he could play a great one B to your one A, or a perfect two A to your one A, um, or to your one. But your one's got to stay healthy, um, and Paul George has to stay healthy himself. But. What do you think? I mean, I would love to see Paul George come to the Lakers if there's a way. You know, he's been kind of – he's been rumored to come to the Lakers, but that's not something that I'm, – I'm just putting it out there. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. Um, talking about the Lakers, you know, Trey Young has been rumored to come over here, another superstar to help. Do you think he will help? Uh, will that be a good look for the Lakers? Not sure what's going to happen to D'Angelo Russell. Um, the Lakers just need firepower. They need consistent shooters or points besides AD and LeBron. You know, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, they got to stay consistent. D'Angelo Russell has to stay consistent if you stay with the Lakers. So we need another person that could just score at least 15 to 20 points in the playoffs. I know it sounds it sounds easy, but I know it's not. They just need that third role player, scorer, that could also be a playmaker and help alleviate the pressure off of AD and LeBron, an aging LeBron on that. So, um, you know, I heard about Austin Reeves, and there's rumors, but the Lakers are like, we're not, we're not parting from Austin Reeves unless – you throw some real shit at us, you know. So, so, and I don't blame him. I think Austin Reeves is a dope player, and I and I, and I believe in him. So, um, what do you feel about Trey Young coming to the Lakers? That's a rumor. How do you feel about the whole Paul George situation? If he goes to the Warriors, how would that change him? Clay Thompson removed all of the social media from uh, of Warrior stuff. On his thing, I like to see Clay. If we had Clay and Trey, as long as Clay could find a way to score twelve points off of like five shots, I'd be happy. You know, um, I don't think Clay is a person that needs the ball a lot. He just needs to spot up and shoot, and we'll give him all the time in the world. So it won't be like the whole um, uh, Green. It won't be like the whole Green situation. Uh, we're not looking for him to do all that. We're just looking for him to, to just sit back and shoot. I think the green situation went left hard because, like, dang, man. Like, he, yeah, we ran him out of town. So that's the guy from the Spurs I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about right now. So if it's, I can't, can't remember his name. Uh, just remember green. So the guy that went to the Sixers. Uh, let, me, let me look about. Let me look about. Uh, green Sixers. Give me one second, guys. Danny Green. Yeah, I mean, we we knew we know we know how that went with the Lakers, and yeah, we had to, we had to let him go. So, um, but yeah, like we're just looking the Lakers, man, and I'm I'm putting we as me. We're just looking for some help. But it doesn't look like people want to play ball with us because like, I don't know if it's a LeBron thing or if it's just a Laker thing, but whatever we can get, man. Whatever we can get. Um, but, yeah, where do you think Clay ends up? Do you think he stays with the Warriors or do you think that's the end of an era? Beautiful era, that for him. Alex Caruso getting traded for Josh Giddy. Um, I'm happy for Alex Caruso, but... I do not know how that how that trade even worked out. Like Josh Giddy is trash, so 
Josh, um, excuse me, Alex being on the Pelicans, or excuse me, uh, on OKC, the Thunder, that's a young team. That team's dope. Good for him. Um, looks like the Bulls just need all types of help. They're trying to trade Zach Levine. I'm sure DeMar wants to get out. I'll take DeMar as well. You know, so that team, that, that, that city is in a rebuild. Chicago, they're looking crazy right now. Um, yeah, I'm not too fond of whatever Chicago is doing. We're not off taking sh- gritty or giddy, but hey, keep their books light. They can't even trade Zach Levine for peanuts. So I don't know what's gonna happen with that. But yeah, that uh, who knows where Alonzo Ball is? You know if he can even run or play basketball or wh- whatever. But a team that I thought had decent promise just yikes. You know. They're they're looking for answers now. Um, will Jimmy Butler stay in Miami? I'm I'm pretty sure he will. Obviously, there's rumors about him being disgruntled or not liking the way Riley is approaching things. This and that. Tyler Hero. I don't know. They the nine. They're nine in shining armor. How how much they believe in him? Um, don't don't understand it. But will Jimmy Butler stay? Bam just signed a three year extension max with the Heat. Good for him. I think he's an underrated player. Um, yeah, and and the Heat system works for him perfectly. Obviously, the draft is around the corner as well. So, what do y'all? Who do y'all want? And and who y'all looking for in the draft? I'm I'm not too sure if people. Uh, this draft is as big as others. I really haven't heard people named except for like Bronny, um, but. Yeah, like, who are you looking for? Is there any player that you think that will help your team? Some news on the college side. I'm not a huge college fan. Like, UCLA, I like Colorado because I'm obviously Dion. Um, but I don't really follow it. But, you know, besides the game re coming back out after, like, a decade-plus hiatus because they weren't paying their athletes. Now the NIL is in there, so now they're paying college athletes, so... Shout out to the college athletes. NCAA removes cannabis from ban lists for players. Now, that is interesting. We're paying you, and we want you to play even if you're high or whatever. So, you know, are they just getting with the times because, you know, it's becoming more accepted in the mainstream, or was it just like, or is it just to capitalize on money? You let me know. Um, But I, Okay, you know, we'll see how it affects or not affects players. Deion Sanders just spoke about him with the Colorado uh, Buffaloes. Has no interest in leaving Colorado for the NFL. And I quote, I'm a leader of men, not a follower of men. I'm a father, not a baby daddy. I lead my sons. I don't follow my sons. My sons, Travis included, are getting ready to migrate to the NFL. I'm not following them to the NFL. Uh, Joel Klatt show. This was a quote from them. So, what do y'all think about that? Do you think Deion Sanders will eventually become an NFL coach? Or do you think he's really trying to build something in Colorado? Um, Yeah, I think he wants to build something in Colorado. He's brought a lot of attention to the sport, a lot of attention to that that university program. Um, And I'm interested to see what he can do, you know, as... As soon as he can get the talent and, you know, the recruiters to, to believe in him and and change it around. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people hating on him. And I, I want I want Dion to, to succeed. I think he's a good role model. Um, and I and I hope that he's able to build a program that can that can define, you know, their 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 university and, and and I hope I hope he does well. God bless on on that end. Let's switch over to soccer. We got the Euros. We got Copa America. Let's talk about a little bit about the Olympics and the women's U.S. team. So Alex Morgan has been left off the Olympic roster. This is the first time she's been left off the international team since two thousand eight. This is big news. Um, pretty much the face of U.S. soccer for the last decade or so, she's not on the team. Do you feel like it's a changing of the guard, changing of the era? Controversial move? You think it's, you know, it's past her time? 
how do y'all feel about this? The, she she put out a beautiful statement saying she's still going to support the team. But do you feel like she should still be on the team? Um, I think she should. Even if just there for leadership. But they left her off. So what do y'all feel about this? Then I got some quick boxing news, guys. Haney is trying to remove his footage from the zone. I heard he's asked the zone. This is rumored, probably true. He's asked the zone to remove the footage of the Garcia fight. Don't want to get, don't want to, he doesn't want people to see him get beat up, but it's already happened and it's been, in, you know, embedded. And it's social media era, bro. Like it's everywhere. It's not like back in before where you could limit and the view of stuff. And you don't have enough money to, 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 to take all the internet stuff down. So, um, yeah, how do y'all feel about that? I understand it got ruled to a new contest. I understand that, you know, Garcia was caught cheating, whether it was voluntarily or involuntarily, tainted supplements or not. But how do you feel about the way Haney is going about it? Do you think it's OD or do you think, hey, like, what he's doing is right? Like, he's trying to, pro, you know, uh, preserve his legacy. Um, some people say he's moving like a clown, though, so... You know, Garcia said he's going to retire for the year, quote-unquote, that he's suspended. So it doesn't look like he got suspended or whatever. But how do you feel about this whole this whole Haney and how he's been moving in the way of that? Like, is he a sore loser? Like, is he right? Do you feel like, no, like Garcia should eat all that and more? You know, what's y'all take? And... Tank versus Lomachenko's in the works, possibly. Davis people reach out to Lomachenko's people. How do you feel about that fight? Loma looks good, but is he a little bit too long of the tooth? I think so. Um, I think he's like 36 plus right now, 36 years old or plus. I mean, he still could do what he could do, but... I and, and Haney, you know, controversially beat him. I think Tank knew what he was doing. I'm not saying that Tank was scared of Loma anyway, but... I mean, yeah, we're going to take the fight. I think it'll be a decent fight, but ah, I just, uh, I think, I think, I mean, Tank's going to do what he has to do. You know, people are calling for Shakur. People, people want to see that fight, but uh, yeah, I, I see what Tank's doing. And T.O. is fighting too. He's fighting very, like, I think this weekend. Along with the 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 UFC three hundred three card, so what do y'all think about that? Do you think Teofimo will win? Where do you think he fits in all this? Do you think he could fight against a Crawford, or can he go down and wait and fight against Tank, or do you think Tank can fight him? And I just put it out some speculation stuff. Not to say there's any of those guys are rumor with each other, but um, I think if the money's right, Teofimo will fight anybody. Um, so will Tank. So will Crawford. But the money got to be right. Anyway, y'all, thank y'all for listening. Let me know what's going on, man. Follow me on, you know, social media from the east side with love underscore on the each word on IG. I know y'all see me posting, you know, a lot heavy on there. Just trying to build a, the following up and follow us. On, you know, subscribe to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Pandora. SoundCloud, we're everywhere, baby. We're trying to grow. And, you know, I appreciate all the support and love, man. So to so hop in and, and tune in. And thank y'all. Peace.